Markdown, a super lightweight markup language. What does it do? It makes plain text become more. It uses plain text characters to create formatted text. This has been around since the early 2000s, and I honestly don't think I could live without it. It's a very important part of my toolkit. I use it as the basis for my lab documentation. I use it for documentation within Joplin, for lab documents in VS Code and in JupyterLab. It's on my website. And really, you'll find it all over the place. You'll find it as a built-in feature in Reddit and Stack Exchange and similar sites. It also exists in community-based blogging platforms such as uh, Slack and Discord. You'll enable limited versions of it in Google Docs, uh, but plugins for it exist in many, many frameworks and applications. So it's supported in one way or another in many places. So what I want to do in this video is show a couple of examples of where I use Markdown and then actually demonstrate how to format text using Markdown within VS Code. So let's take a look here now and look at the screen. I'm working in Joplin, which is my note-taking program. And this is a great note-taking program that you might be interested in. You can see on the left here, I have lots of notebooks and then the notes inside there, but I'm gonna get rid of those columns. And so we can just see the actual note. And this is in split screen mode right now. So on the left-hand side, we have the markdown that I've written. And on the right-hand side, you have the actual displayed text, the kind of thing you'd see on a website or in preview mode and so on and so on. So at the top, we have a heading and that looks like this over here. Then we have bullets, which you can create with dashes or with asterisks and that shows the bullets here. And here we have some bold, which uses two asterisks on each end of the text and here's our bolded text. And you can add whatever you want as long as it's within markdown confines. So for example, if I wanted italicized text, I would surround the word with a single asterisk and that would show up as italics on the preview mode or in the displayed mode. What I use Markdown for a lot is for code. So code snippets and code blocks. Here we have a code snippet or inline code, if you will, and you just surround it with the back tick. And that'll show up as this. If you want a code block, then you would do a triple back tick and you can have as much code as you want. So definitely check out Joplin because it's markdown based. And if you do a lot with code and commands and you just wanna write your notes and you don't really need pictures, then Joplin is really awesome. Um, it synchronizes to your mobile device. It's free and open source. So definitely check it out. Great program. Now, another place that I use Markdown is within JupyterLab. Normally, if I'm creating documents that will be lab-based, I'll use VS Code or an IDE similar to that. But if I want something that's gonna be more interactive and perhaps is using Python, I'll use JupyterLab. Now, JupyterLab is very Markdown-based. If you look here, this is all Markdown text. If we press Enter, we'll see the Markdown version. And we have, pay close attention here in italics. It's got the asterisk on each side. Press escape and control enter and you can see pay close attention is in italics. So it's the same type of markdown, works the same way, but perhaps we want to add code as well. So we can do that. We can add markdown cells and code cells in Jupyter Lab. So if we press the B key, that'll create a new cell for us. And by default, it sets that up as a code cell. Maybe I want a markdown cell so I could just explain what I wanna do. Press M to change it to markdown. Press enter and say, use the backtick, import OS backtick command to import that module in Python, right? Okay, control enter, and that puts that text in there in display mode. And we see the command that needs to be typed. 
But in Jupyter Lab, I may say, okay, I want it to be more interactive. So I'm going to add another cell and do the actual code for this. We'll press enter and just put import OS. So that's an actual Python command. Press enter for that. And the import OS command is there. And it can be run interactively in a variety of ways within Jupyter Lab. If we scroll down here, we'll see a lot more of the text that I've created in Markdown with instructions. But down here, we have an actual cell with Python code. All this is doing is displaying the status of a Linux service. You can also do that with Bash. And in Jupyter, you would just preface or prefix your command with the exclamation point. Now, generally, if I'm doing just bash-based labs, I'll just do it within an IDE like VS Code because it has a built-in terminal. But if I want to work with interactive labs that utilize Python or a couple other languages, then I'll use Jupyter Lab so we can actually run these commands directly in here. If I press control enter, it actually runs that command and gives us the results and can add that directly to your document. So you can have all the information of what you want to do and what you actually do, and then type in more markdown notes afterwards if you wanted to within here. Right. So markdown is a huge part of Jupyter Lab, another piece of the puzzle for me. But here's the thing, not all programs and platforms are going to interpret Markdown in the same way. So it might look like this in Jupyter Lab, but it might look different in another program. It depends what Markdown uh, processor you have built in. So when Markdown was originally created, it was ambiguous and different people and companies and organizations decided to interpret it in different ways. But then came common mark. Common mark came to try to standardize markdown. And you can see this page that I'm at commonmark.org slash help. And this is a lot of the standard stuff that you would do with markdown italics, bold headings, links, and so on and so on lists, ordered and unordered, horizontal rule, and of course, inline code and code blocks. So check that out. Common Mark is what a lot of the organizations and companies and websites are using or some derivative of Common Mark. So this is a great place to start for you if you're new with Markdown. And I also have a table of standard commands on my website with the corresponding article for this video. One of the places that uses Common Mark is within VS Code if you're running Markdown. So let's go to VS Code now. And so I have Visual Studio Code open here. I'm going to create a new file and I'm just going to call it markdown.md and start working in Markdown. So this is my Markdown file. And if I just type regular text, that's exactly how it's going to show up. So let's show that actually. Let's open this a second time to the side. And then on the side, we'll show this in preview mode. Okay, so VS Code has a built-in preview mode so you know how to look on a website or in another platform. Regular text here in Markdown is just regular text. That's it. But we can do so much more. We can actually format it. Let's do that now. For example, we can add a heading. So we'll use the number sign or pound sign, if you will, to create heading number one. When we do that, it creates that nice big heading here in preview mode. Then we might have more text or maybe we'll have bolded text. Just surround it with double asterisk and you get that bold text. You want italics, single asterisk. There you go. Now you can also use underscores if you want to for this. And you'll get that same type of bold. Okay. You want a lower level heading, just add another number sign. 
that would be heading to. And you can go up to six levels with this. Once you get to the fifth or sixth level, usually it's gonna look this pretty much the same as bolded text. You can do list items as well. Let's say we need a list. List item one, press enter, it automatically creates another hyphen for us. Uh, list item two, and so on. You can use a dash or hyphen or tack, if you will, for these, or an asterisk. Either way, it's gonna work. You can also create numbered lists. So one, numbered item number one, and it'll automatically keep numbering those for you. And quite often I'll be adding notes to my text. This is the block quote option. It's gonna be the greater than sign. So I might say something like this, note, this is the block quote option and we'll scroll this down so you can see it so it looks a little bit different you get that lighter text it tabs it in and so a little bit different there you might use that for important items or exclamation point or note that's up to you so again what i'm using this the most for is for commands and code whether it's commands in an operating system or code within a programming language so let's show a couple examples of that now and the first one would be an inline snippet, which could be code or a command. And so for example, I might say something like this in a document. To update a Debian system, type the following commands. And I might go down to a new line here, do my backtick and say sudo apt update. And you see how that command shows up here. Now that can be inlined right within your sentence, or you could have it as a separate line if you want to, that's up to you. But if you have a block of code that you need to work with, multiple lines, then the single back tick's not gonna work, you wanna do a triple back tick. So we would do a triple back tick here and then add whatever code it is that we want to add. So I might say something like uh, clear, let's say this is in bash, I'll do a clear and then echo um, hello world and then end it. And that will show up here like this as one block of code. If I wanna specify exactly what programming language I want to show that is or display that as, we could say, okay, this is bash. And then that will give us our color coding and syntax highlighting for that. You might also use Markdown to incorporate hyperlinks or images. So let's show that also. If we go to a new line here, we can add a hyperlink. Let's say we wanted a hyperlink like, Krauss Tech, that's gonna show up as whatever name we put into the square brackets. The actual hyperlink is gonna go into your parentheses. So that might be this, okay? Now at this point in our display, we have an actual clickable hyperlink that we can work with. Now, this may or may not work perfectly for you in all instances. For example, let's say you wanted this link to open in a new tab. You wouldn't really be able to do that with Markdown. Some platforms support a Markdown option for this with a target equals blank, but most platforms do not. And instead you would have to do it with HTML if HTML is available to you. So you'll see things like that. And also if you're working in something like Discord, uh, sometimes you don't want pop-ups to come up from the link automatically. You can prevent that by adding alligators around the link inside of the parentheses. But that's just some extra stuff. That's not standard common mark markdown. If we want to add an image, we could do that as well. For example, we could put something like this in here and we'd put an exclamation point, and then in square brackets, we say the image name, and then in parentheses, we can put the actual link to the image and whatever that link needs to be. This is a broken image right now because I don't have a real link, but we could modify that. And I could copy and paste in something real here. There we go. And so that's an actual image. 
the name won't actually show up unless you hover on that image, and that's only if that is accepted by the platform in question. So there's a variety of formatting that you can do within your Markdown setup. And again, like I say, I'll use VS Code a lot to write my documentation to make my lab documents for classes or for labs that need to be done by uh, teammates or customers. And so I'll actually write it in Markdown and then watch what it would look like on the right side in preview mode simultaneously. For more information, you might be interested in the Markdown Cheat Sheet. If you go to markdownguide.org, this is a pretty good website. You'll see they have lots of information about Markdown. And there's a cheat sheet here with basic syntax. And then some extended syntax. Some companies and organizations and platforms will allow these. Others will not. A lot of these do not work, for example, in VS Code or in Joplin or on a lot of the platforms out there. So for example, uh, subscript and superscript probably won't work in most places that you'll be going to, but you never know. And so those are considered extended syntax, but all of these basic syntax options, they'll work in just about everything. And what I was showing before within VS Code, VS Code basically uses the same markdown that GitHub uses. And this is actually a GitHub extension that we have installed here. And it's called Markdown Preview GitHub Styling. So it looks just like it would look on GitHub. And both of these, GitHub and VS Code, they're essentially based on Common Mark, which is what I've been showing. Everything I've been showing here is common mark based. I also have an add on here called Markdown All in One, which allows you to add shortcuts to modify your Markdown files. So if I wanted to have this item in italics, I could highlight it and press Control I and use those WYSIWYG standardized shortcut codes on the keyboard to automatically put in that markdown formatting. That's just for markdown files, right? If I want note to be in bold, control B, but that's only because I added this markdown all in one and that's just in VS Code. Some other platforms will do the same type of thing and they'll give you that WYSIWYG ability. Uh, for example, if we're working in Joplin and I type a word here, highlight it, control B, it will automatically apply that. So they have lots of shortcuts built in there. So these are some of the ways that I'll work with Markdown. Definitely check it out. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at my website and check out the corresponding article to this video at my website as well at Prouse.tech.